Mary had a little lamb, it streaked with white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Lewis nudges him right to the body, a left hook to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. The count is five, six, seven, eight. The men are in the ring. The fight is over on a technical knockout. Max Schmeling is beaten in one round. More than a hundred years have passed since a simple nursery rhyme spoken into a small hand crank machine gave birth to recorded sound and created an industry with an annual income today of two and one half billion dollars. The father of the talking machine is considered America's greatest inventor, the man whose genius also gave the world the motion picture camera and the first practical incandescent lamp. desk in his study is undisturbed since his death in 1931. Nearby, the cot he used for his catnaps. Reminders everywhere of Thomas Edison, who believed there is no expedient to which a man will not resort to avoid the real labor of thinking. The flickering light, the sound of music, these motion pictures, they are all the legacy of a man whose story begins in another time, another century. Born in 1847, Thomas Alva Edison has only three months of formal education, and yet at age 30, the Wizard of Menlo Park invents the talking machine. In July 1877, Thomas Edison was very serious about reproducing the human voice. Now he was so busy on so many telegraph improvements that he didn't get back to it until November 29th. 1877 and now it was firm in his mind as to exactly what he wanted built and he made a sketch November 29th this machine in front of you the original of course of this was built and finished December the 6th and he was surrounded by three or four of his men one of the men built it and they were very anxious as to what it would do because he said it was supposed to talk and now I'm going to give a demonstration of just about exactly what Thomas A. Edison did 100 years ago, December the 6th, 1877. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. When Thomas Edison made his first recording, very much like I just did, his voice vibrated a thin diaphragm, which in turn vibrated a little stylus. And uh, the stylus made indentations on the tinfoil. And of course, they were proportional to the vibrations of his voice. Now, the big test was about to come. He had to play it back. <laughs> That was the way it happened on December the 6th, 1877. Thomas A. Edison found out how to reproduce the human voice. When the recording was played back, his three witnesses and Thomas A. Edison were completely surprised. This strange machine had worked the very first time. Soon the talking machine, called the phonograph, will record artists and entertainers, words and music. Exhibitors sell tickets for public demonstrations, and a single phonograph earns more than $1,000 a week. Americans have a new kind of entertainment for long, cold, dark, shivery evenings indoors. Millions of people will listen and laugh, hum and sing along. By 1881, wax replaces tinfoil, and Thomas Edison's cylinder records are playing better and lasting longer. 
Laughing song sung by Mr. George W. Johnson. It is on record. <laughs> I got down hell from laughing. Where did you get that girl? Oh, you lucky devil. Where did you get that girl? Tell me on the level. Have you ever kissed her? If she has a sister, leave me, leave me, leave me to her mister. 1892. Disc-shaped records are introduced, and they in turn begin to replace wax cylinders. Produced at first on hard rubber and later shellac, these new discs can be manufactured in great numbers by machine. They are cheaper, play louder, and are more convenient to use and store. Throughout his lifetime, the talking machine is and remains Edison's favorite invention. Having moved his laboratory from Menlo Park to West Orange, New Jersey, he carries out experiments that fill 3,400 notebooks. Thomas Edison averages a patent a week at his invention factory, and his lifetime total of 1,100 is by far the greatest number of patents held by an American scientist. His workday, 20 hours and sometimes more, will become legend. Genius, he says, is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. In 1927, a celebration is held to mark the 50th anniversary of the invention of the talking machine. Thomas Edison is on hand and repeats the nursery rhyme that made history. The first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, it's reached quite as slow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> as years pass, recordings of great books help to end the loneliness and isolation of the blind. The Vicar of Wakefield by Oliver Goldsmith, read by William Brenton. Recorded solely for the use of the blind in the talking book studios of the American Foundation for the Blind. I was ever of opinion that the honest man who married and brought up a large family did more service than he who continued single and only talked of population. Talking books will be the most important technical advance since the development of Braille. Sound recordings, document and playback famous events and people making history come alive. We take you now to Lakehurst, New Jersey. The ship is riding majestically toward us. It's practically standing still now. They've dropped ropes out of the nose of the ship. It's into play. Get it started, get it started. It's crashing, and it's crashing. It's crashing terrible. Oh my, get out of the way, please. It's running, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the mooring beds, and all the folks between us, this is terrible. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's the flames running, oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky. It's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now. And the frame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass. All the humanity and all the fans. By the 1940s and 1950s, the jukebox becomes the music maker in dance halls across America and around the world. Recording techniques have come a long way since the original talking machine. Advancements and improvements make possible long playing records with sounds so good that it is given a name, high fidelity or hi-fi. Today, the recording industry, not television or motion pictures, is the largest part of the entertainment business. There are 
more than 1,200 companies in the United States, producing some 2,600 albums and 6,200 singles, totaling millions of records a year. Rock and roll, jazz, soul music, show tunes, each has its own fans and followers. Hi-fi and stereo equipment reproduce faithfully the sounds of artists and symphonies on 73 million phonographs in American homes. All this because a century ago, Thomas Edison spoke into the talking machine, and the talking machine played his words right back. 